Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is part of Lead Code um, contest, this week's contest, 316. Um, so the second problem is number of subarrays with GCD equal to K. So what we get is um, an array of numbers and an integer K. And what we want to return the number of subarrays of the array nums such that the greatest common divisor of the subarrays elements is K, right? So a subarray is basically just a, a contiguous sequence of elements in the array. Um, and GCD is the largest integer that divides all the array elements. Okay, so for example, let's take a look at this array. Um, and k is equal to 3. So we are looking for the subarrays where the greatest common divisor is 3. Um, so of course, 3 itself, the only element 3, is um has a gcd of three so th we include these nine and three have um a gcd of three so we include that subarray and six and three also have a gcd of, th of three so that's why we have four um here seven and we have only four four is not even divisible by seven so we return zero um now one thing to give like the give us an idea of the solution or the constraint here so the array's length is at most 1000 right so this tells us that we can do a n squared algorithm and end up with just 10 to the power of 6 so that should pass right um so which means basically now since all n squared algorithm should work let's just try all the subarrays and for each subarray calculate the gcd and check if it's equal to k count it if not um, don't count it. So pretty much very brute force solution. Um, so let's do that. Um, so what we need to do first is um, just go through um, the array, right? Get every subarray possible. So for j in range of from i to n. Um, notice I'm including i here. This is so that we can take only one element. So for example, the, uh, the case of three uh, right when k is equal to three, we want to take this element three here, right? So that's why we include i here. Um, we need the count. That's what we'll return at the end, right? And now what we want is to count to calculate um, the GCD. Well, one way to do it is when you get here, you do like for every num in the range of, um, or maybe you could say index. Um, in the range of i and j, and then compute the GCD for all of these. But actually, let's just do it accumulatively, right? Because here we can just start out with, um, since we have only one number, the GCD is just the n that number. And now, each time we just calculate the GCD of the accumulated GCD we have so far, and this number we are looking at, right? So what this would mean is that um, for a range, let's say like... Um, Let's take maybe the example we have here. Uh, let's go here, take this example. Okay. So what this would mean basically is first we do g is equal to 9, right? Then we encounter 3. What we do g equal to the gcd of 9 and 3. So that's 3. Right? And then when we go here, right? Now the gcd of, um, I think, nine and so sorry three and one i think that's one right so that's one and you get the idea we do the accumulative one to get the gcd of the subarray and so that's what we are doing here now if j is equal to k which is what we are looking for here like in this case then we need to count it so we need to increase the count by one okay um, and, and this will work for all cases because, so first we start from i at index 0, right? And then we, we keep trying all the g's. So first g is this, so we consider just 9, then we advance. Now g is 3, so we, we do the gcd of 9 and 3, so that's a valid solution like we saw here. Then we increase g, now the gcd is 1, so that's not valid. And from now on, it will keep being 1, so we will never be equal to k. Um, and then we advance i w from this loop. So we advance i here. Um, and j starts out at i. So now we have just 3. 3 is, uh, is a, has a GCD of 3, right? So we count, increase the count. So now our count is equal to 2. 
Um, and then we advance G again. Now one. So now our GCD is one. We keep doing this. GCD will always be one. So we don't add anything. And then we advance our I again. Now uh, G is equal to one, right? Um, now G equal to one. So we advance G still one. It will be one because GCD of anything with one will be one. So we don't add anything from that. Um, then we advance here, right? GCD of two is just two. GCD of two and six is two. Sorry, I is still here. It's still two. GCD of two and six, three is still two. So we don't count anything. Now we advance here. GCD of just six is six. So we don't count anything. GCD of six and three. Now that's three. So we increase the count because it's equal to K. Um, and then we advance I. So I and J are at three. The GCD of three is three. Um, so it's equal to K. So we increase and we get four. So that's the idea pretty much um, of what we are doing here. Now this also work. Doing I here works because the GCD of the number and itself. So for example, the GCD of four and four is four. GCD of three and three is three, right? And so this, this should work fine. Um, now the only thing is how do we calculate GCD, right? So in Python you could definitely use math, but we can also write our own. So let's run this with this Python function and then write our own GCD function afterwards. Um, so n here is just the length of numbers, so let's just define it. Um, okay, so let's submit. Cool, so without passes test cases, in terms of time complexity, the solution is O of n squared, um, n being the number of elements, because we are doing two loops here. Um, now let's write the GCD ourselves instead of using math function here. So to do that, well, let's just do GCD of two elements. Um, so basically, it's while the second element exists, we keep swapping. So we swap and we assign to the divisor B. So we keep trying to divide um, until we reach the, sm the greatest one, right? Uh, and then we return um, A here, right? Um, that's pretty much it. So for example, let's say for 9 and 3, how would this work? So A would be equal to, let's say, 2, 9 and b equal to 3, right? So first, b is not equal to 0, so we'd assign, so a will become 3, and b will become 9 modulo 3, right? So 9 modulo 3 is 0, right? Now b is equal to 0, so we return 3, which is the divisor, right? So that's the idea here. Um, yeah, so let's submit the solution. Okay, so that solution work as well. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Pretty straightforward. Uh, please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.